Okay, welcome everybody. So this is video, what video are we on? This is video three of a four part series where I talk about how to comp investment property. And uh, the first video we talk about laying the groundworks of um, comping property and a lot of tips and tricks in that video. The second video we talk about um, property on a main road. This video we're going to cover comping property on a lake. One of the worst properties to comp. I hate comping lake properties. So just let me put that out there. Um, Michigan, as you guys know, or may not know, is an area filled with lots and lots of lakes. I mean, we even have the Great Lakes, right? When you are on one of the Great Lakes, it's a lot easier. But we have, and let me show you the property that we have in question here. So I've chosen a another random um, property to comp. Um, did not look at this ahead of time other than just choosing a random address. But Michigan has an unbelievable amount of little, little lakes everywhere. Um, and it can really kind of be a pain in the butt. So uh, this is not the funnest topic for me, but I'm going to show you guys how to work through it. Look at this absolute beauty uh, of a nightmare <laughs> that we're going to get involved in here. This is a very common area in Metro Detroit. You got a lot of little lakes. Some of the lakes are what's known as all sport lakes. Some of the lakes are um, certain restrictions on them. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different stuff, right? So we have so many little lakes in Michigan. Um, very common. So what do you do if you get a property on the lake? Uh, and this is just a very small sample of an area. Um, you know, if I were to zoom out, you can just see endless, endless lakes. Um, now, obviously, if you're something if you're something on a shoreline like this, this is actually a lot easier over here on the right to work with in terms of comps. Um, or, of course, if you're on one of the Great Lakes, you know, like this, and you're right on this uh, beachfront here, that's going to be awesome as well. But this is a little area. Oakland County is known. Uh, it's part of Metro Detroit. Here's Detroit City here. Um, it's known for just having a lot of lakes like this. Uh, here's one Kent Lake as well. But the reason why I chose this area is because for investors in our area, um, more commonly than not, you're going to find yourself kind of right in this sweet spot, in this Oakland County sweet spot. Um, and one of these lakes, like a Wolverine Lake or a Cass Lake or a Union Lake or an Elizabeth Lake, that type of stuff. So I wanted to just choose something kind of right in the center of it all. You have a lot of different cities that cross into these lakes too, which makes it difficult from Bloomfield to Kego Harbor to Commerce. Um, so a lot of stuff in here. So this is a real nice um, mess of a comping situation that we're going to get ourselves into here, but we're going to work through it. You guys wanted me to shoot a series of videos on different um, properties to comp, um, some easy, some hard. In terms of the collect, uh, uh, in terms of the um, um, like what would you call it? Uh, hardness of comping properties. This is this is about as good as it gets here for you. So we're going to dive into this. So make sure you follow me. What I'm not going to do is go backwards and talk about the basics of comping. Um, I did that in the first video. So I'm going to just work through this and have you guys watch. Um, and there's going to be a lot of things that I skip and don't explain because that was done in the first video. So make sure that you guys watch the very first video, the basics, um, and, and a lot more might make sense to you. For those of you who don't want to watch that video, um, there may be some things in here that I, that I don't elaborate on because I don't want to um, reiterate myself in, in another video. That's the first video. So. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. So this is the property that we've chosen. Whenever I comp a property, the first thing I like to do is put it into Google. So I go 2073 Willow Beach, and that's in Kego Harbor, Michigan. I like to do two things here. Um, I like to uh, see what Zillow has to say about the property, though zero, Zillow is not the most accurate. It's establishing what I call a ping, which you'll hear me talk about often in the last two videos. Um, a ping is a feel for the area and the value of the area um, so that I can start to zero in a little bit better. And then I like to get a, a, a um, view of the area as well in the property that's in question. So when we deal with lakefront property, um, you know, you can have a $2 million house next to a $3 million house 
you know, next to a uh, $500,000 house, next to a hundred. I mean, look at the difference in houses right here. This is why I don't like lakefront properties, because you've got this house, this house, this house. You know, you've got million, multi-million dollar houses. It's a wide gambit of, of different things. So when it comes to comping lake properties, it's critical that we talk about square footage, because that's going to give us, there's going to be a price per square foot that properties are selling for on a lake. So, when, so we really want to focus and pay close attention to square footage when it comes to lakefront properties and then uh, also the lake type, right? So is it an all sports lake? Are there restrictions in the lake? What is it? So I like to just get a feel for the area which we've done here, okay? Um, not much of a feel. Uh, and then I like to look at and say, okay, so there's our property, okay? Um, and uh, it's on the con it's a canal front, so it's it's on the water. Um, probably not the best view of the water, but it's on the canal. Um, let's see what our property looks like. Okay, we got a rough idea. Zillow's saying that this property might be worth his estimate two hundred and eight thousand. Um, again, Zillow is not the most accurate, but it's going to establish what I call a ping. So I'm going to go ahead and write this down in my comp sheet. So let's go ahead and start here. This comp sheet is available. It's in the download section on the YouTube video here. Um, this is a series that's being shot to put into our Ultimate Real Estate Investing course as well. If you guys don't have the course yet, um, you can check it out at the Ultimate Real Estate Investing Course.com. Um, changing people's lives with that course. Make sure you check it out. Um, this is an updated series uh, and training that we're adding to the course. We're also making it available to everybody here on YouTube because I think this will help a lot of people. Uh, when it comes to uh, investing in real estate, you have to get the price right. If you're off by $10,000 and you have a net profit of $20,000 anticipated, $10,000 is not hard to be off by, but yet you could potentially be in a scenario where you're losing money. So comps are critical. So you can get a copy of this Excel sheet in the description. Let's go ahead and start dive into this and put our property here. So Willow Beach, and that's in Kego Harbor, Michigan. Zillow is telling us this thing is a three bedroom, a two and a half bath, about 1,600 square feet. I would assume there's probably not a basement um, because it is on a lake, and if in or if not, it might have a walkout basement. So we don't know anything about the property yet but we're going to find that out. So, um, 2073 Willow Beach, 3-2-1633 square feet. So it's a 3-2-1633. Um, does Zillow have the year that this thing was built? Let's see. And I don't even know which one of these houses is ours. It's so hard to tell with Google Earth on these things sometimes when it comes to lake houses. Uh, it's very challenging. Um, to figure it out. So, um, let's see. Uh, 1918 is what it says. Year 1918. We'll see how true that is or not. We don't know right now if it's got a basement or a garage. In previous uh, videos, we were able to tell by looking at the Google Earth view, we could get a good indication. Here, we're going to be relying heavily on um, maybe there's an old listing ticket for this property. Uh, as well too. Zillow thought this property might be worth uh, 208000 so let's go ahead and note that. That's a ping, 208000 so as I'm looking for comps, I don't know, this thing might be worth somewhere within that range. Sometimes Zillow is way off. It could actually be worth 500000 uh, It could be worth 100000 but this is going to at least establish some sort of a ground. It's like if you were lost out at sea, and you had a random GPS signal that in a search and rescue team was looking for you, they're going to be able to find your last coordinates going by this random ping from your GPS signal. That's what this is like, okay? So I ping properties all the time just to kind of see. So right now Zillow is saying somewhere around 208,000. Okay, and I keep that up here in this right corner. Um, so what else do we need here? Uh... Boom, 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 boom. I want to know what's very important in dealing with a lake is where does this property sit? So let's go ahead and go here. 
This property sits on Cass Lake. Oh, okay, there's our property. So it's right here on this canal. So you're going to have water access, but you're not right on the water. We're kind of in this canal here. Um, and this is the canal for Cass Lake. So I want to write that down on our comp sheet here, Cass Lake. The lakes are very, very important. You want to figure out what kind of lake it is. Um, is it an all sports lake? So I'm going to read this and see if it tells me here. Price reflects need for updates. Enjoy Oakland County's most popular lake featuring updated. Da, 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 that's fine. So Cass Lake, Michigan. Let's see, is it an all sports lake? Or not. Let's see if Google will tell us. Cass Lake is on the blah 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 blah. Let's see if uh, I believe Cass Lake is a. I don't know much about lakes, um, but I believe Cass Lake is an all sports lake. I could be wrong. the largest and deepest lake in Oakland County. Here's a couple other lakes. Namesake um, is Cass Lake, Michigan, all sports. Let's see. Yes, all sports lake. So there you have it. Wake restrictions, yes, in some areas. So this is very important what kind of lake it is because if I wanted to buy a property on this lake, if it's not an all sports lake, then I may be restricted to what things I can do on this lake. Can I fish on this lake? Can I use motorized vehicles on this lake? All that stuff. All sports lakes means I can go and, you know, use use anything. I can do anything on this water for the most part. Okay? So it's very important to start with when we're dealing with lake properties, figuring out what the heck this lake is, right? What can you do on this lake? What can you not do on this lake? So Cass Lake. Um, let's see, Open, let's see if there's anything in here. All sports lake, here you go. Water restriction, wake restrictions, yes, in some areas. Okay, depth, average depth, public access, um, public beach, da 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 da. Okay, so there you have it. All sports lake, which is going to make this actually a lot more valuable. Maybe not, I don't know. I don't know too much about lakes, but maybe some people don't want to live in all sports lake because they don't want the sounds of boats all the time. Right? Maybe they want a lake that doesn't have motorized vehicles. Maybe that lake's more valuable because they don't have that noise all the time. I guess value is in the eye of the beholder, right? Some people would say it's valuable to have it. Some people would say it's not valuable. That's up to you to decide. Um, if it were me, I, would, I don't think I'd want the noise. I'd want to be somewhere a little bit quieter, maybe a lake that has restrictions on it. You can't use motorized vehicles, that type of stuff. But we have established that this is an all sports lake. That's very important. Okay, so first of all, we're dealing with lakefront properties. Figure out what the heck lake we're on. We are on Cass Lake. And then what kind of lake is that? I just Googled and I got, you know, it's an all sports lake. Okay. Now, when you're on this property, obviously, if, if this individual was not in a canal, there'd be a lot more value to kind of be like right here on the shoreline. But this person's on a canal. doesn't mean they don't have access to the lake. It's just a different set of views. So let's go ahead and start comping this property. So we're going to go ahead and go to, um, let's see here, search. Now this is where we're going to have to get into a detailed search because we're going to have to get pretty detailed and look at things that are just um, in this particular area on lake. So this is sold. We want everything sold from 0 to 180 days. We're going to do a, a radius around that lake, but let's go ahead and do um, 2073 Willow Beach in Kego Harbor. Whoops, what happened there? 2073 Willow Beach in Kego Harbor. So now I'm not going to get into what I'm really focused on with waterfront properties is price per square foot for being on the water. 
I'm not going to get into the style of the house and all that stuff. I am going to do probably, you know, three or more bedrooms for this particular property. Um, but not so much the style of the house because you guys can see from this Google Earth view here, we've got hundreds of styles of houses on this lake. So the style of the house doesn't matter as much as the square footage, as the square footage of the property, you know, the proximity to the water, is it on the water, what are their views, that type of stuff. So let's go ahead and see now. Um, so I'm not, I'm going to leave all that out. Um, basement, all that stuff, I'm not going to get into that right now. I want to see everything that's on this lake. So I'm not going to get into the garage, basements, all that stuff. I'm looking for what is the price per square footage houses are selling for on this lake. So we definitely want to make sure. Um, and again, I might not even get into cities because there's going to be several cities that cross in and out of here. So for right now, I'm going to hold off on that. And actually, let's see if I can increase this radius here a little bit. So criteria, let's go ahead and do, there must be a section in here. I haven't done a lake property in a long time, but um, there's a section in here I know you can do body of water, and that's going to be cast lake. So maybe I have to add it down here. Add or remove additional sections. Um, let's see. Let's see, water. Waterfront name. And let's do water features. And then let's go ahead and go back. So, waterfront name. Cass Lake, five. So there's five properties there that match Cass Lake. Let's go ahead and actually do a square mile radius around this property to see where that takes us. Okay, I'm gonna actually do um, a little, I'm gonna paint around this lake here with this feature here. Now we're crossing into some different um, cities, which are going to, they will dramatically affect the value. Whoopsie, I don't know why I'm going way down there. We want to stay on Cass Lake. So I'm going to ignore that for now, but let's include this shape. There we go. So there's a whole bunch of properties here in and around Cass Lake. Um, let me see if I take off this restriction and just focus on these properties on here, map. So what I want to start to do is establish a price per square foot. Price per square foot. Whoa, boy. There we go. Now, looking at my house, so criteria, looking at this house here, we can tell that this is not obviously, you know, based on the Zillow. Where did the Zillow go? This is not a mansion. Okay, so I want to exclude from this search any property that's going to be like, you know, probably over $500,000 on this lake. I want to try to narrow it down a little bit because we got a lot of stuff. So there's going to be mansions on this lake. There's going to be real high end properties on this lake. If I go to the search here real quick, you'll see in the results. Mm, it's taking forever. Come on. Hopefully I don't have to restart this map here. I don't know why it's taking so long. Get rid of this. We already know about that. Let's go back. Summary, summary, 
So watch, now if I look at all these properties here, a whole bunch of different properties, but if I scroll down to page three, let's see what the most expensive property is. So the most expensive property on this lake is $1.6 million. Obviously we wanna eliminate properties like this, right? So let's go ahead and like this one here, 950,000. We don't need that, we don't need that. Right, these are newer built houses, 2006. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to, now as we look for comps, I'm gonna go ahead and try to keep it within our year. So we know the potential year for this property was what? 1918 or something I think, right? Year built, 1918. So let's, let's narrow this down a little bit and go back to criteria. And let's keep the year built, let's say between 1915 to 1990, okay? So 1915 to 1990. And this isn't updating, it's confused, but if we go back over here to map, and that's gonna show us, we're gonna try to keep the year range, I, I don't wanna go newer than 1990, because that's gonna affect the value quite a bit. I'm gonna actually get rid of this. Delete that shape. And then let's go ahead and go back to criteria. All right, so we got the year in there. We got 38 matches, properties that have sold. And then let's go ahead and put the price in there as well. So let's say any property between 100 to 500,000. That's gonna eliminate some of those big mansions, big mansions and everything else. Okay, let's go ahead and go to map, boom, there we go. Now the other thing I wanna do is see, it's very important because I know that this property has, um, it's considered waterfront, though it's on the canal. It's very important that we look for other waterfront properties. So we're gonna go back down here, and we're gonna go to um, uh, water features, wherever that might be, on here somewhere. Let's see. You guys probably see it before I do. Water, water features. No, it's not what I want. I want it to say waterfront. Waterford. Garage features, so we know this all sports lake, but we want it to say, is it waterfront or not? Here we go, waterfront, right here. So waterfront, yes. So now we go from 30 to six. Now that might not be in our favor because depending on these six properties, I might have to open that back up. I might have to open that back up. Um, let's see what we're working with here that actually have waterfront that's sold. This is going to give me a price per square foot. So we've got six that are on waterfront. Now our property is in Kego Harbor, so anything that sells in West Bloomfield, this is why it's difficult with waterfront property because you have all these different townships and each township has a different value in terms of its real estate. So when I'm looking at these comps and I see Waterford, West Bloomfield, West Bloomfield, you know, a house in West Bloomfield is gonna be more valuable than a house in Waterford, for example. So here we go, Waterford, right? Our property was in Kego Harbor. So we're gonna have to go back here. We're gonna have to go back here and do, um, where did it go? So I wanna stick within this, within this range here. So let's open this back up and take away um, the water front and leave that blank so that we have 30. And then let's see if we add in the city, let's see if we add in Kego Harbor, what that does. Kego Harbor, six matches in Kego Harbor. So right in this little area here, 
right in this little area here. So I'm going to actually use these comps here because our property was like right here, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, one of these little canals. Um, we can use the properties on this other side of the lake here, but see, we've got many different cities blending, and those are going to be different values. So I want to just try to keep it towards Kego Harbor property, Kego Harbor, Harbor comps. So um, let's take a look and see what we're working on here. So let's go ahead and go to results. And, and that's going to tell us, see, I'm already starting to see a trend on price per square foot. See price per square foot, 151, 122, 128, right, for Kego Harbor properties. Now, if I go back and I get rid of Kego Harbor and the city, and I do, and again, I just want you guys to observe my thought process here, okay? So over here, we start to get into Waterford and West Bloomfield. Though it's the same lake, it's going to be different values for those areas, and we'd have to do deductions based on that. But Waterford, see, 95 Waterford is going to be less than Kego Harbor in terms of price per square foot, $96, 96 Here's one in Kego Harbor, 151 So my trend, my pings are telling me, you know, uh, what did we say, 120 to 150-ish a square foot so far? And this, again, we're just pinging, right? 120, 127. Here's Waterford at 127. Now watch, if we get to West Bloomfield, 151. Kego Harbor, Kego Harbor, 128. So it's looking like 128 to 150-ish per square foot. When it comes to lake properties, square footage is key. Is key. 123. 182. Okay, so let's go back up here. Um, I'm going to go back to criteria and I'm going to put in uh, Kego Harbor and let's work from there. Kego Harbor, so six matches. So results, we've got six matches. Now here's one. Uh, built in 1929, so pretty close to ours. What, what, what was ours? Let me write this down. I got a notepad in front of me. Um, so ours was a 3 to 1633 square foot. Built in 1918. Year is important in this scenario as well, too. So um, let's see here. Built in 1918. So this property here was built in 1929. It's a 3 1, 1,000 square foot. Let's see what it looks like. Now, we may not find any properties that are renovated in this neighborhood. Um, maybe this is an exception. It looked like it had some nice new floors there for a second. So, we may have to add value for if ours were renovated. So, this one looks like it was renovated. This would actually be a good comp. See that? New bathroom. So, this is a renovation. Let's see, can we get to the kitchen? Kitchen, yep, so this is a renovation. So I'm gonna use this as a comp. So I'm gonna write this down. It's got a double lot as well too. Um, so this is two, and I'll put this on the Excel sheet in a second, 2215 Matty. And that's a 31,054 square feet. That sold in seven days seven days on market. That's important in case we have hard money on this property. We know how long it's going to take to sell. We start to establish an average days on market for the area. This was built in 1929. It's got a two-car garage. What did ours have? I don't remember. I know it's got a garage. Um, did it have a garage? We'll have to go back and look. We'll have to go back and look. Let's see if the photos have it or not. Yeah, it's got a garage. Yep. So it's got a garage. Probably one, one car garage there. So ours does have a garage. Yes. Um, let's see here. Okay. So does this one have a basement or no? Let's take a look. 
partially finished fin finished basement, so part finished. And that sold for uh, 192, 192k. Okay, no concessions or anything like that. So that sold for 192k. So I'm going to put that on our comp sheet here. That's going to be a high comp. I'm going to put a little X here on the left to indicate to watch that one. That's a very good comp to use. And that was, what the heck was the address? I forgot. Maddy, M A D D Y. And that's a 31054 um, square feet, basement, part finished, year. 1929 garage uh, one car oh, no 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 that one had a two car two car um, that was seven days on the market sold for 192,000 a renovated house okay very similar to what ours would probably be like if we're renovated so equals that bye bye let's see the price per square foot $182 a square foot. So we'll adjust our ping here. Probably between 125 and 182. So right now we're trending for $182 a square foot for a property on a lake or on a canal with lake access. Renovated in Kego Harbor for $182 a square foot. $182 a square foot. And ours is 1633 square foot. Okay, and that sold for 192,000. So let's go ahead and go back here and see what this one is. So this is a 32 1600 square foot, so close to ours in terms of square footage, no basement, no one car garage. Let's see what that looks like. Oh wow, that's a very interesting house, huh? So I would certainly say that that's a, a dated property. It's not going to be it's not going to be worst case uh, property. Worst case properties like a foreclosure or a bank owned or something like that. But this would be a mom and pop house. I'm going to write this down. This is a comp. This is two four eight eight Willow, and that's. Uh, a three two sixteen seventy square feet, nineteen fifty two year, sold for a hundred and ninety k, no base, no basement, one car garage. And what are we missing here? We'll find out in a second. So let's go ahead and go. I'm gonna put that as a mid level, two four eight eight, Willow. That's a three, two, let's see, 1670 square feet, basement, no year, 1952, garage, one car, days on market, 36, right here, DOM, 36, sold for 190, uh, dated. But, move in, ready, equals, oops, I should put that 190,000, so that equals that divided by, remember, if, I, if I'm skipping through stuff, it's because we taught it in the first video, so if you're not following me and some things don't make sense, go back and watch the first video where we talk about comping basics and the reason why I have low, medium, high comps and all that stuff. Make sure you guys go check that out. So about $114 a square foot there for that property. Okay, we've got another comp here. This one is okay. You know, it's moving ready. It's not a renovated type of house. It's just a normal person's house. Um, doesn't look like it has a garage there. 
So let's write that down as a comp. That's in Kego Harbor. That's 2985 Elam. That's how you say it. I don't know. 160,000. That's a 3 2, 120, or 1,246 square feet. No basement, which is not abnormal for the area. No garage, though, so we got to watch that. That's going to affect the value. Um, built in 1945. 45 day, days on market. So let's go back here where this one said no basement. I want to highlight that because we still have to determine if ours has a basement or not, and I will after we look at these. But uh, that can affect the value. You know, we've talked about in other videos a basement in our marketplace could be thirty to fifty thousand dollars. So. Um, so we're going to mark that as a no basement. Same with this. This is 2985 ELAM, I think. I don't know. I forgot. It doesn't matter. Um, what is this? A 3, 2, that's 1246 square feet. This one has no basement. And it was built in 1945. Has no garage, which could affect the value as well. And that's, <clears throat> see the price for square footage here is down because it doesn't have a basement. So ours is going to be really down here because it doesn't have a basement or a garage. This took 45 days in the market and sold for 160000 which is reflected in the price. No basement, no garage, um, okay shape. So no, no. No. Make those red. And then I want to um, do that as well, too. So equals that divided by square footage. $128 a square foot for that property there. Okay? $128 a square foot. My mind is telling me that we're going to be probably somewhere hovering around this 182 or a little lower. Uh, we got to figure out if we have a basement or not, though. We're going to do that in a moment. So, let's see here. Let's take another comp. Let's take another comp. Um, this is a nice property. So, remember, we're looking for ARV, after repair value. This one looks like it's been recently renovated. It's in great shape. So, this will be a good comp to use. Let's go to has a garage. Let's go ahead and use this one as a comp. So this is 1867 S Y L V A N Sullivan Glen. And that's 140K it sold for. That's a 31922 square feet. Unfinished basement. One car garage. 1928 and 120 days on market. Now I bet you it's been on the market so long because they probably started very, very high in their price and then uh, it took them a while to realize they were too high and came down. Let's see if we can see the original li listing history on this thing or not without getting out of this window. Um, no, I'd have to type this in individually and see the listing history, but I bet you that's why. So now there was concessions on this $200, but it's not enough for me to bother with it. So concessions is this property really sold for, you know, 139800 right? You would just subtract the concessions for it, but it's not enough to affect anything in this scenario. If that was five or $6,000 in concessions and you'd want to pay attention and say, this was a $5,000 concessions, that means that property really sold for 135000 um, and you'll, you know, just double check that, okay? So 1928, let's go ahead and go back and put this in our sheet. So um, that was, a, I would consider that a, a, a renovated house. So 1867 SYL Sullivan Glen, and that's a 31. 922 that has a unfinished basement 
built in 1928, very close to ours. Ours was built in 1918. Um, that has a one-car garage, sold in 120 days um, for, what did we say it sold for? I probably should have paid more attention. 140, 140,000 um, updated house. Okay, I'm putting a little X next to that one to keep an eye on as well, too. Equals that, divided by that, 152. So remember, I, I said there's probably going to be between 152 and 182 a square foot for a renovated house in this area. So that's what we're trending at right now. 125 is a low end, not renovated, mid-grade type of stuff. So uh, 150 to 182, I'm going to update that there real quick. Okay. Um, is it worth looking at this one? Let's take a look at one more. Sure. Yeah, we'll include this as a comp. This is a pretty decent house. It's not a renovated house. It's one that somebody was living in, but it's in very good shape. It's pretty modern. So we're going to go ahead and use this as well. And that's got a basement. Now, the one we just added has a basement and garage as well, too. Let's go ahead and use... Uh, 2328 Cass Lake Road, and that's going to be a, so for 136.5, that's a 3 1, 1,107 square feet, um, three days on market, built in 1926, that has a partially finished, that has a one car garage. Okay, so let's go ahead and go here um, and put that down here as a mid-grade comp. It's not a high-end comp. Cast Lake Road, let's see, 3, 1, uh, 117, let's see, 1117 square feet, right? Is that right? 1117 square feet. Um, basement, uh, partially finished, uh, year 1926, this has a one car, um, this sold in three days at 136500 um, good shape, good shape house, uh, equals that divided by that, so again, so see, look, for a mid-grade quality house, we're trending at 115 to 128, somewhere between this price range per square foot. For a renovated house in this area, we're trending between this price range. Now, with houses on lakes, you're not going to have, when we get up here and determine what this price is for, there's going to be a swing. There's going to be a swing. So when you're investing, it's not going to be as tight as it would be on a property in a neighborhood right? That's not on a lake where you can get that price really close. There's going to be a very, very big swing between the prices between 152 and 182 a square foot. So when, so when you're investing in this property, you have to plug into your net sheet and you'll see on our net sheet that we provide. Let's see if I can pull one up here for you guys real quick. And this is in your ultimate real estate investing course as well too. But you'll see in your net sheet, Whenever I invest in a property on a lake, I'm going to take that bottom end number. Let's say it's $152 a square foot. And bear with me, my net sheet's pulling up here. And I'm going to plug it into my worst case sales price. And if, it, and if I am not in a position where I lose money on that worst case price, then I'm going to go ahead and invest in this property. Now, if it looks like I'm going to lose money on that worst case price, I'm not going to invest in this. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about here. So on our net sheet, you'll see I look at worst case, likely, and possible. And if it looks like I'm losing money here, worst case, I'm not going to make an investment in this property. If I'm going to you know, make money, then great. And I'll show you guys in a second what that looks like. So let me. this is in our Ultimate Real Estate Investing course. This net sheet tell you your Mayo calculator, your flip projections, all that stuff automatically. So... I got a pretty good idea of what's happening in this neighborhood. Um, one thing I want to do is just take a look at our competition and see what's on the market and what that is priced at. 
So let's go ahead and see what's pending, if there's anything pending. And there's two pending. So let's see what that is. These two here. Um, one, again, see, 122 is square foot. Now this one is at uh, $250 a square foot. Let's see what's going on here. Looks like a much newer house as well, too. So, um, it's built in 1979, so much newer house. So I'm, I'm not going to even use this as a comp as 250. Uh, this one here would be a good comp, no garage. Um, 122, so again, it's probably trending within this area. It's probably going to be a somewhat you know, it's not going to be a renovated house, maybe. Let's take a look. It's going to be a mom and pop house somebody's living in. They're looking to sell it, right? And so the starting to paint a clear, yeah, see, it's not renovated. So, I'm, oh, those are nice countertops, though. I actually like that color, the brown and the white. So, you know, this is a mom and pop house. So this is a mid-grade house. So if I wrote this down as a comp right here, you can see that 120 to a square foot price, right? Remember, so we're starting to establish that trend. It's very easy to see now. Okay, so I'm gonna actually gonna write that down. You know what, no, forget about it, because it's pending, so it doesn't matter. Now let's go ahead and look at, pending means it's under contract. So that's a good indicator that, look, once they got within that 122 a square foot price, it went pending, okay? So let's go back and let's take a look at our competition. That's important to look at as well too. What's on the market that somebody can buy in Kigo, Kigo Harbor in this area? And let's make sure we're not outside of our competition as well. So results, um, again, look, 177 a square foot, 1926. Let's see, is that an updated house? Doesn't look like it. But it's active. It doesn't mean anything. Nobody's buying this thing. Right? I think they're going to have a very hard time selling this property. It's been on the market 73 days right now. They're overpriced. Uh, this is active. 130 a square foot. You're starting to see the, the similarities here? 128, 122. Let's see if we can find... Ooh, oh, that's our house. And ours is dated. It needs updated. But let's see if we can find a house. Here's one. At 130 a square foot, 135 a square foot. This is a nice house. Very nice house. Look at that. That's active at 130 a square foot. 130 a square foot. It's a very nice house. Um, so that is a 2100 square foot house, which should have a much different price point. If this were shorter square footage, you'd see this price per square foot going up a little bit higher um, than that. So that will skew our numbers if I use that. What that's saying is that um, it's a larger house, so the price per square foot is actually going to come down a little bit more. So I'm not going to use that as a comp because it's it's much bigger than our property. Ours is 1,600 square feet, but this is 2,100 square feet. Same thing here. This is 2,500 square feet. Uh, this one here is a little closer, and look, it's 139 a square foot. So this would be a better one to look at. Um, and that is, let's see what condition this thing is in. So... You know, it needs updated. It needs updated. It's a move-in house, but it needs updated. You can move into it, but it's not renovated. I'm going to take note of this one as an active listing. And that is 2386 Willow Beach. And that's on the same street as ours. So this is, but, but it's active, so that doesn't mean anything. This, this price could be off because it hasn't sold yet. It's been on the market for four days. Okay. Um, that's a 3, 3, 1364 square feet, two car, unfinished basement, 
at um, 1928 is the year. Um, what else are we missing? We'll figure it out in a second. So I'm going to list that here, but I'm going to put this as, as active listing. Um, doesn't mean anything. It's just I want to look at, make sure we're not overpriced for our neighborhood, right? Make sure we're not overpriced. So what is our competition telling us? So that's going to be 2386 Willow Beach. And that is a three. Oh, no. Hold on. Did I screw that up? 2386 Willow Beach. Yep. And that is a 3-3, three, three, 1364, uh, unfinished, built in 1928, garage, that's what we're missing, um, two-car garage, that's days on market four, it's priced at, the heck is this boy priced at, 189.9, 189.900 active listing move in ready but not fully renovated so I'm gonna just draw attention that this is an active listing this is an active listing so active has not sold could could sell for a hundred and fifty thousand right we don't know if they're overpriced yet it's active but that equals that divided by that. Again, you're starting to see the trend, 139 a square foot. I really think that we're going to fall between this um, 150 to 182 square foot if ours is updated beautifully um, for that neighborhood. So we got a pretty decent looking house. It could be upgraded, nice upgrades. You're on the canal. So let's see. Couple other things I want to look at here. Okay. Oh, I wanted to go back and look at the listing ticket on this and figure out a couple other things here, real quick. Remember, we still don't know if we have a basement or not. That's going to affect it. So, um, our address is uh, 2073 Willow Beach. Actually, it's right here. I don't even need to do that. So, click on this. So we're going to look at this ticket. A lot of times there's an old MLS ticket um, in there that you can look at and get the information off of. That's what we're doing here. We know that we have a two-car garage. So I'll update that two-car. And we know that um, basement is what I want. So it's on a crawl. So that's going to affect the value. So we're going to have to make adjustments for that. So it's on a crawl space. It does not have a basement. So crawl. We're going to have to adjust the value for that crawl. So these here have basements and they're selling from 182 to 152 a square foot. My adjustments, I'm going to put a category here, adjustments, I'm going to adjust that by 20 to $30 a square foot because um, equals that minus 30 equals that minus 30 because ours does not have a basement now you see we land anywhere between the 120 to 152 a square foot because ours does not have a basement but it does have a garage so you got to figure out what is the value of, of a price per square foot for a property in your neighborhood and make those adjustments right in your marketplace I know that I'm gonna adjust it between 20 to 30 dollars a square foot if it doesn't have a basement Okay, and it might even be more than that. So those are going to be my adjustments here because it does not have a basement. Ours is on a crawl. These two are great comps of ours telling us we're between 152 to 182 if we have a basement, but we don't. We're on a crawl. We do have the garage. So that means my new, my new range is going to be this, between 152 to 122 a square foot between 122 to 152. So if I go here and I type in worst case scenario, I'm going to take that low number equals the 122 times 
1633 square foot. So worst case scenario, my house will sell 198,000. And I really think 122 is probably too low because you have these guys here. Look, you have 128, no basement, no garage. It's an okay shape. And then you have these here have basements. So I'm going to bump this up to probably at least the 128, which means that worst case scenario, your house would sell for, you know, a 209,000. Now likely, you're probably going to be this 152. Whoopsie. Equals that times this square footage. So 248. And then best, best case scenario, let's see, you're probably going to get, let's say you get one, let's say you split the difference between these two, 182 and 152. This is 922 square feet, one car, 1920 unfinished basement. So let's say you're at 165 a square foot. Let's say you split the difference. So best case scenario, you get somewhere around um, 155, so equal, or 165. You know what, let's make it 162, add $10 a square foot to it. So equals that times 162 a square foot is 264. You're not going to get more than that because these are selling from 152 to 182 with basements. Similar years, similar years, okay? Ours is a little older. Ours is built in 1918. We have more square footage. Now, remember what the listing said. The listing said price reflects the need for updates. So generally what somebody will do is they'll come in, see they're offering this for sale for 175. Generally what people do is they'll come in and say, all right, you know, if the market's 250 for this property and we have to put 50,000 into this, then we're simply going to take 50,000 off of the 250 and that'll give me a price somewhere around 200,000. Let's see, Zillow told us around 208. Now the other thing I want to look at is the real list, the AVM, and the city assessed value for this property and plug that in here too before I make a final conclusion. So my gut is telling me that you're probably going to be able to sell it between this 209 and 248 renovated. Best case, the 264. So that means, you know, this is at $152 a square foot and this is at, what did we say, 128, right? Yeah, 128. And this is at 162. So I think you're going to fall within these two here based on everything that we're looking at. So, but let's just get a one more confirmation here real quick. Let's go ahead and look at real list data. Real list takes forever to load. So the city, the SEV, is saying that this property is worth 108000 and that's probably where Zillow is getting their data from. In Michigan, in our area, SEV is half. So that means it would be, what did we say, 108? So equals 108 times 2. The city says it's worth 216. Whoopsie. That goes down here under SEV. And then the real AVM is something where that you've heard me talk about this in other videos the real AVM is the MLS is sampling the sales in the area and saying you know based on the recent sales in the area I think this property is worth you know between 151 and 189 so I'm just going to note that 151 to 189 the real AVM value uh, 151 to 189 so now Look, 216, 208, we got these comps here. 152 might be pushing it. 162, I really think, is pushing it. But I don't invest on this high number here. This is a bonus. If this happens, and it could happen, fantastic. That's a nice bonus. This is more realistic if we put in some high-end upgrades to this, and then we know for sure we're going to at least get whoops, the 128 a square foot updated. So if I'm going to invest in this property, I actually 
I'm going to actually drop this down to 150 to be honest with you. So equals uh, that times 150, 244, so 245. I'm going to make my offer based on this 245. So remember, if I go to my Excel sheet, and this is in your course, the Ultimate Real Estate Investing course, if, if ARV is telling me that I need to make my likely price is 244, then all you guys have to do to calculate Mayo is go to your course documents, go to the Mayo calculator, put in your after repair value, which is that 244 number. Let's just call it 245. And let's say to get there, we have to put in 45,000 in renovations, right? Now that's telling me that if I want to have a 60% Mayo, a 70% Mayo, 75% Mayo, and 80% Mayo, right? Meaning 20% return on my capital, 25% return on capital, 30% return on capital, or 40% return on capital. In a competitive market, we're usually around 80% Mayo. Then that tells me Mayo is after repair value times your 80% less repairs. That gets you, that means I'd have to make them an offer to purchase this property for 151000 And I'm going to make my 20% return on my capital. So now if I go over here and I say I make um, my offer is uh, 151 right, this 80% Mayo. If I make it at 151, okay, we got the title policy, we've got that in there. We're not going to do back taxes, back water, that's going to be the seller's responsibility. We're not going to wholesale this property to keep it for ourselves. Let's say we've got an extra $1,000 in miscellaneous closing cost. So we might be, let's make it 1500 We might be one, 153 into this property. Now this is where it comes into play. Remember I told you guys, there's a swing on this. This is a big swing between 209,000 and 244,000. So let me plug in that 200, let me plug in that 209 and 244. So let's say worst case scenario, we sell it for 210, likely 245, I'm just rounding up here. And best case scenario, we said what, 264. We take into account 6% real estate commissions when we resell the property. We're planning on putting 45,000 into this. See this sheet, this is in your course. We'll calculate all this for you. You just plug your data into the orange. Does your mail calculator, your rentals for you, all that stuff. And then your closing costs, when you resell this, you're gonna have closing costs about 2% when you resell this property. So look, that means that I'm going to make about $26,000 net on this property, possibly 44. But do you see a problem here where my comps are telling me, worst case scenario, $128 a square foot, right? You might sell this property for $210,000. In that scenario, you could stand to lose $5,200. So as an investor, we're determining the risk versus reward. To me, this is a little too risky. This is a little too risky for me. I personally, you know, might steer clear of this property, or I might say, you know, um, let's try to get the renovation down to forty thousand. What would that look like? Is that realistic? Right. Let's get the renovation down to forty thousand. Right. And in this scenario, I'm almost breaking even. Okay, and then I could do things like let's save on the real estate commission. Maybe we don't, maybe we do 5%, right? But this is a danger zone here. This is a danger zone. So, worst case scenario, you have to be prepared that you might only sell that property for 210000 and you might break even or lose money. So, that means maybe you go back and you try to get this under contract for 145000 and then you're a lot safer here. You have a positive, you have a little bit of a buffer, but you have a big upside. The reality is that property is, is probably going to sell for around 245 updated. And you make 38,000, but you're also safe here. You're safe here in case you have to do that fire sale or something goes wrong. You have to give yourself that a, a buffer 
when you're dealing with lake properties because there is a big influx in pricing. There's a lot of variables there in pricing. So um, you have to give yourself that buffer. So this has been a great, great video. Hopefully you guys learned quite a bit in how we look at things here. Stay tuned, uh, four part series, uh, basic comp, main road comp, late comp, rural comp. If you've liked what we've talked about here and you wanna take your investing business to a much deeper, deeper level, check out the ultimate, the ultimate real estate investing course.com. This is a course that uh, we have over 50 training modules in here in depth. Um, it's a course that grows with you every time, just like these videos, every time somebody asks for more content, um, we add it in there. You pay a one-time fee, you never get any upcharge. So like these videos go into the course, students automatically get access to them. Um, great, great stuff. Check out the, um, the outline here on the page. This shows you everything that's inside the course. Um, you can sign up to get a free coaching call with me here, a free 25 minute coaching call. You can sign up for that. Um, I'll talk to you about your real estate investing. These are real testimonial students that are on the course here. Um, and then you can pick your plan. There's a payment plan, a more popular plan, um, which you pay up front. And this is one time fee. You get lifetime access. Anything that we shoot and add to the course, you get that as well too. And then you also get um, live monthly coaching with me and access to our private Facebook uh, group mastermind. But check it out. Really watch this video that's on here about what's in the course. Um, this course is changing people's lives. As you guys can see, since March in 2018, students have net over a million dollars on this. We also have a two-day event coming up, um, the Ultimate Real Estate Investing two-day live retreat. Uh, you guys can click there and check out that event as well too. Um, so that's going to be an awesome in-depth training for two days in August. Early bird tickets are on sale now. Hope to see you guys either in the course or at the event at both. Hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, we'll chat with you soon. Bye-bye.